Welcome to Firm Foundation. In these times of shifting standards and faulty foundations, there is a solid place on which to build a victorious life. And that place is the firm foundation of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Your host for Firm Foundation is Brian Hudson, a Bible teacher, pastor, author, and producer of Life in Richie Media. My assignment today is to encourage men and fathers. That's my assignment, encourage men and fathers. And to speak life over you, to speak blessing to you, to give you some principles to live by, to share what I've learned in my life and learned from my father and my grandfathers. And I want to just encourage us today. Encouragement goes a long way, doesn't it? Encouragement goes a long, long way. So today I want to return to the series we were teaching uh, a couple of months ago called Imago Day. I want to bring that back into the lesson today. Imago Day, this is part six. We preached and taught five of the lessons. You can go back and find those in the podcast. But today, let's talk about Imago Day, which means image of God. And today's topic is qualities of a man and father. Say qualities of a man and fathers. We're going to go, first of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and read verse 12 from the Living Bible. It reads, Paul wrote, I begged Apollos to visit you along with the others, but he thought it was not at all God's will for him to go now. He will be seeing you later on when he has the opportunity. Keep your eyes open for spiritual danger. Stand true to the Lord. Act like men. Be strong. And whatever you do, do it with kindness and love. Good words. Now, the same verse from the King James Version, verse 13 and 14, 1 Corinthians 16 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all your, let all things, let all your things be done with charity. All right, so uh, Living Bible says, act like men. King James says, quit you like men. Quit means act. And now, 1 Corinthians 16, in a modern translation, New King James Version, it says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. So we see the translation of the word has gone from act like men, quit you like men, to be brave. And that's the real concept behind it, is, is bravery. Now, you know, the Bible was written at a time when men were often idealized. And often men, also there's more of a patriarchal structure. And so that these things were said about men, uh, and even though the Greek word does refer to men, but the context is clearly uh, to, to the believers, be strong. And the idea is we, we think of men as brave. We think of men as strong. And that's the idealized sense that we used to think about men. It's somewhat different today. And if I thought, you know, there's a show back when I was a kid, uh, those of us of a certain age would know of a show called Father Knows Best. And that was the theme. And the dad wore a suit and tie and all this kind of stuff. And uh, leave it to Beaver and all this, that, that whole era. But I thought today, you know, if there was a show today, they might call that show today Father Don't Know Jack. I mean, that's how people feel about men today. You know, now, not everybody, but the culture has shifted. And even talking about men and fathers would be offensive to some. But I'm talking from, from what the Lord has helped me understand. And this is a Father's Day message, and, and you know, so this is what we understand, and not disrespecting what other people have to say. But I got, I got the microphone now. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I want to encourage men today. And so when he says, act like men, uh, we want to think of men in that way now, being brave and being courageous. And, and, and that said, children who are raised in a loving and caring home do see fathers and men that way. I've always seen my dad like that, and, 
he saw his dad that way because when you're raised among men who are caring and loving and who are brave and strong, you think all men are like this. And of course, you learn differently. Quite easily. You learn quickly. It's not that way. But at least you had experience of seeing the ideal. So then the Imago Dei, the image of God in, in men, in all of us, all people, by the way, saved, unsaved, have Imago Dei. We're all made in God's image, saved or unsaved. Yet, when you look at God's intention for men and fathers, you see very clearly in the Bible and through examples God gives us of what he's after. And so we want to, I want to encourage men uh, in the Imago Dei, in the image of God today, men and fathers to, to understand that you have received from God his nature, you have his, uh, you know, you, you have his encouragement, you have his grace, and the problem is we don't often ac access what we have available to us. So we thank God that uh, I believe our children have seen in myself and, and their granddads and such and their uncles and all that. They, 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 they've seen what men look like. We don't struggle in knowing who a man, what a man is. We don't have no struggle with that. And I was talking to a, a friend and, and you know, I hear discussions online sometimes. People talking about what's wrong with men and black men and, and fathers going all sideways and having this discussion like, what are y'all talking about? It's not my experience. I mean, I, I'm aware of men who've gone sideways. I've helped men who've gone that way. But some of us haven't had an experience. So don't talk to us like we've all, we're all oppressed. We all don't know where we're going. We're all deceived. We're all... Sometimes the conversations people have are just self-defeating. Because if you, say, if you say all men are this way, all men are that way, how are you going to find yourself one? You know, if, you, if, you look, if you're looking for a man, if they're all bad, how are you going to find one? You know what I'm saying? So you better change your confession. And at least, at minimum, at minimum, people, don't make the worst example the narrative for everybody. Please use the word some. Don't say men, no, some men have these issues. Some fathers don't step up. You got the point. Now, let's get into this. So what is Imago Dei? Bit of review. Imago Dei is a Latin term for image of God. Knowing who you are is foundational to both a healthy self-image and a strong sense of purpose. And we know that from Genesis, we'll read them on from Genesis, God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Well, we were all created to bear, to be image bearers of our creator. This is, why, this is why we don't teach, we teach that people are made by God, we're not evolved from some lesser thing. We are special creations of God, imbued with God's image and God's likeness. But of course, we're far from the ideal state. Humanity is far from where we all should be as a, as a people. And even though Imago Dei is not um, a quality that's realized in every man, each man has a potential to live in the Imago Dei. So that's why I said to you back in that series, a good place to start with your preaching to people and encouraging folk is to ask them, do you know that you're made in the image of God? You have Imago Dei in you? That's a good way to start. Just start right there. Before you try to say, you know, the whole gospel, just start with encouraging them about what, what the possibility is. You could, you're made in God's image. God loves you. You're, you're made. God put, him, put a part of himself inside of you. Start there to, to give them hope as you preach the gospel. All right, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, right? So he starts by saying, let us make man in our image. Well, humanity, all people are made in God's image and likeness. That's not true for animals. It's not true for other species of, of creatures, it's only true for people. So this word image 
here in, in the Hebrew is the word shalem. Now, the word image, it, it, it really means a representative figure or image. It's best understood as representing the character of something or someone. So, for example, we know that the Bible says that, that when Adam gave birth to a son, the Bible says that that son was begot in his own likeness and image, that is Seth. So then God made us in his image, and then we have children in our image and likeness. Here's the difference, though. So the image speaks of character. Well, my dad, you know, he's honest and hardworking and, and, and loving and caring and serving, and I have that in me. I have those qualities in me. And then the, that's character. There's it, likenesses look like, well, you know, I look like dad somewhat, you know, and mom as well, obviously. So we, we kind of look like our parents. That's likeness. But more than just look like resemblance is sometimes how we operate, how we function, what we do. It's like the one who birthed us, both parents and in God. So image is character. Likeness is behavior. So understand that we're made in God's image and likeness, and the ideal state is that we would carry God's character and that we would behave like him. Here's a quick summary of the words we see in that text in Genesis 1. Didn't read it all, but in time. But so God's image is character. God's likeness is outward witness or behavior. Dominion speaks of responsibility, tasks, duty, and service. We know this very well, that all of us who've raised children, you give them dominion over a room, a box of toys. <laughs> you start small, you know what I'm saying? I want you to, to deal, have, deal with this, take dominion over this, those tasks, duties, and service. Be fruitful, which of course in context is having children and so forth, but also fruitful utilizing abilities and gifts. All right, so you're getting out of your life what God put into your life. Multiply, again, talking about reproduction, uh, having children and such, but also it means reproduce yourself. When you mentor people, right, when you coach, when you teach, when you educate, you're multiplying yourself and empowering others. And finally, subdue, create and maintain order. So again, that's an overview of Imago Dei. And we're talking about, again, talking to fathers, encouraging fathers and men today. And always start, start in the book of beginnings to know what your purpose is. To know your purpose, as Miles Monroe often said, to know what your purpose is, go talk to the creator. He'll tell you, he'll show you what your purpose is. The one who made you will show you. All right, let's go ahead now. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 16. Let's go back here again. 1 Corinthians 16, I'm going to skip one slide. All right. So it says here, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 again, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. Now sometimes responsibilities, brothers, and expectations seem overwhelming. God says all these things to us, he wants us to do and be as men, as fathers. It can seem overwhelming. But remember this, and I always tell you this, that whatever God requires, he provides. Say that, what God requires, he provides. So it may seem overwhelming, and I believe anything that's really worth pursuing should feel overwhelming. I mean, if it's easy for you, then what's the point? You know, so, and I... Um, now, actually, I do work out. You don't look like that. I work out every week. You know, you know, I look like a one day, okay? All right. But um, so I go in the gym and every week, and, uh, and this thing called a slide, and you push this thing. It has wheels on it. And I'm like, oh, I pushed the slide when I was in high school. This is, you know, I just lean. I'm, it's big, listen, as big as I am, I just lean on this thing. I lean on it and make it move. So I mess with the guy. And I just, don't, don't talk to the trainer the wrong way. He threw some more weight on it. I should have shut up. Sal. This is easy, I said. He threw more weight on the thing. And when you push the thing, it actually pushes back. 
it has some kind of, somehow, you, harder you push, harder pushes back. This is, this is, this is sad. This is, this is evil. <laughs> so my point is, sometimes things seem overwhelming, but remember, whatever God requires, he provides you, so you lean into it. Just however difficult it might seem, just lean into it. Get into it. Because what's the point to saying how hard it is when you got to do it anyway? So just lean into it. Say lean into it. Because the point is, listen, a model day is the image of God. It is not the image of self. Say that. Say the model day is the image of God. It is not the image of self. That's why the things that seem overwhelming and too much, it is too much for you, but not too much for God who's in you. That's how God, see, God sees you, he sees himself in you. So when God asks you to do things, he's not thinking about what can you do. He's thinking, what can I do through you? And that's why it seems hard. That's why, like me in the gym, I can't, this is easy. I'm just asking for more. So I just, my, in fact, I was doing something last week that was somewhat easy. I didn't say nothing. I needed some help. I needed a break. You know what I'm saying? You're killing me. I didn't say a word. I just... <laughs> All right. Now, the thing that looks like a weakness, listen, is a doorway into strength. Now, this is, this is important, brothers, men, all of us, but I'm talking to men and dads. What looks like a weakness in yourself is a doorway into strength. Paul discovered this. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches in needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, this is really kind of crazy talk without understanding what was in Paul's mind and heart and how he had developed his understanding of God's grace, say grace. Now, why would you take pleasure in infirmities, you know, and, and just, you know, troubles and and reproaches, meaning that people disrespect you in needs and persecution, distresses, man. But he said, for when I am weak, then I am strong. The point being, he learned that the weakness was a doorway into strength. It's a way to invite God into your life in a special way. Because if you can do it all by yourself, then why would you lean into God? Why would you trust him? That's why don't let overwhelmed feelings overwhelm you because know that it's just a sign that God wants to reveal himself in you. Reveal that grace and power on the inside of you. And our instinct, listen, our instinct is to complain about problems and needs and reproaches and being disrespected and all that. But Paul flipped the script, realizing that all those things were coming anyway. See, it's coming anyway. So if it's coming, then let me just change the way I'm thinking and say that and know that when I am weak, then I am strong. Let me come back to that in a moment. Let me first show you this. I've got a video clip I'm going to show you. Here's a, a clip I'm going to show you from um, Pursuit of Happiness. We know about this film with uh, Will Smith and his son. His actual son played, you know, in the movie with him. And, but remember this. Now, here's a point to the clip. I taught this also some time ago. There is something called a gift of limitation. Say gift yeah. of limitation. That is to say, it's really good to focus on the desires of your heart. It's good to focus on where the grace of God is in your life. 
I'm not saying you should confess I can't do something. I'm saying you should realize what's in your heart to do or not to do. So why would you, I mean, I don't, I can actually sing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, okay? But I don't sing in front of you at all because that's my gift of limitation. I don't spend any time working on singing because if I did, I wouldn't be able to write books. I wouldn't be able to do other things that I'm doing that I have grace to do. So, so basically, limitation just says, I'm not limited in my thinking, is that I choose to not spend my time on things that take time away from what I should spend time on. You follow me? That's the whole point. And that's what we'll see in this clip and uh, we'll learn from Paul. So watch the video. <laughs> I'm going, bro! Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. So you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? All right. Okay. All right, go ahead. Let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? All right. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, they want to tell you you can't do it. You want something, go get it. Period. And whether in that in that screenplay, if he intended to to demonstrate to his son that something he can't do, you can do, or whether it was you know, he just found out that he checked himself when he realized. My son wants to play ball. I was never good at basketball. So I'm saying to him, you don't try, because I wasn't good at it. And that's both, both things happen in life that, that sometimes fathers and men, whomever, uh, don't want to let someone excel at what they weren't good at. And, but on the other hand, uh, if, let's say in the story, if the young man wanted to play basketball and put his mind on it, he should do it and not let anybody, including his dad, keep him from it. And his dad said that to him, right? As well, understand too, if, if it's not in your heart to do something, you shouldn't do it because somebody said do it, right? I'm aware of uh, people uh, who, who had training to, to become engineers and lawyers and say, I don't want to do that. Even though I come from generations of lawyers, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want, to, I want to be a veterinarian. I want to help people, help animals. So the point is, you know, it's important to let God help you know where his grace is in your life. That's why knowing God, knowing Christ is essential because nobody can give you your vision. Sometimes you find yourself asking folk to help you. You got questions for them and, and they're trying to help you. And you're like, I, I just don't get it. But, but you don't get it. They can't decide for you. <laughs> You're trying to get somebody to help you decide what you should do. And the bottom line is, you have to decide. Now watch this. Let's go back to, to Paul. So, so Paul flipped that script. He said, in when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Watch this. So Paul wasn't trying to do mind over matter. He wasn't trying to drum up some, some positive mental attitude, PMA, 
He actually learned something. Watch this, 2 Corinthians 12. This is really powerful. He said this, God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, I know, brothers, we, you know, we have this whole thing of, of never wanting to feel weak and vulnerable and so forth and so on. I'm not saying project any of that. I'm saying inside of you to understand that when you think you can't do something, and you actually can't do it, that's the moment to know if you give that to God, exchange that with God, he says, then my grace becomes sufficient. In other words, what you're doing is not sufficient. What you think, how you reason is not sufficient. God says, my grace is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I love this text. Read it for years and years. I've used it too. That the very thing that I want to do, I know I should do, and I feel I'm weak at it, that's the opportunity for God to show me grace. Now that grace, by the way, doesn't just come through just thinking. It oftentimes comes through God points you in a direction to get some help, get some additional training. He'll point you to a resource, a book or something. So I'm not saying it just come out of thin air, but some way, somehow, God's going to open up grace to get you what you need. That's good? So brothers, receive that. Now, 1 Corinthians 16, something else here I'm going to share with you from this text. Verse 13, again, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. All right. Now, these verbs, be brave and be strong, in the, in the Greek uh, Bible dictionary, it's expressed in something called a middle voice. Middle voice is a, a grammar term, and it means this. Like, a middle voice, it literally means it is uh, the subject both performs and receives the action. For example, if I say that, I sprayed myself with a water hose, that's middle voice. If I say I sprayed Jimmy, that's a passive voice. So when it says here, be brave, be strong, watch what it's saying here. It's saying through grace, you can both perform and receive the action. I'll say it like this. Sometimes the Calvary don't come. Sometimes the Calvary don't come. It's just you and God. And so when God says, be brave, he, he's not saying somebody help you be brave. No, you be brave. You, listen, <laughs> you, you're both, you're both going to perform and receive the action through grace. It's amazing what you can do by grace. When David faced a crisis of, a, of an unimaginable proportion, he came back to Ziklag. It was burned with fire, and people were all captured and taken away, and and the men who were with him were so distressed, they spoke about stoning him, David. They blamed David out of their pain, and David couldn't turn to anybody. David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's the middle voice. The Calvary wasn't coming, y'all. Sometimes the Calvary comes, sometimes it doesn't come. But grace is sufficient. So he says... Again, act like men or be brave, be strong. Sometime you got to just get it done. Say, get it done. Get her done, somebody said. You know, get it done. And, if, and listen, it's not just, again, it's not a positive mental attitude. It's like what Paul said. Again, he said, God said to him, God told Paul, Paul, listen, listen, Paul, I'm listening. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, we don't argue ever against getting help. I'm just telling you what to do when help doesn't come. Amen? And, I, and, and listen, you know, thank God for spouses and, and, and friends, but you know, some of y'all single, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all got friends you can't call about every little thing. <laughs> some friends, 
you know, friends have their, have their expertise. <laughs> Some friends don't know nothing about what happened today. You know what I'm saying? So it's, so it's time for that middle voice. Be brave. Be strong. So the idea of be brave and be strong is that you perform and receive the act. It's like, again, what David said. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me go on now. Let me give you some closing points. Encouragement for men and fathers. Here's some bullet points I'm going to give you. Just some straight up advice that you know, God has helped me learn. My father's taught me a lot of these things. I'm going to encourage you right now. Encourage men and all of us will be encouraged as well, of course. Number one, I like this, use this acrostic, M-E-N. It means it's men meet every need. Meet every need. Now, again, that's a lofty term. It's one of those things that make you feel like it's too much. It's overwhelming. I can't see how I'm going to do that. But the answer, again, is lean in, right, to the grace of God. And be willing because God will give strength. Again, what God told Paul, he'll tell you. My grace is sufficient for you. Say that. Lord, thank you. Your grace is sufficient for me. When I am weak, then I am strong. So meeting every need, and of course, as fathers, we know it's important to meet that need. Number two, pray and expect good and God. Pray without ceasing. Be a person of prayer. Pray without ceasing. Pray always. And when you pray, come up from that prayer time expecting good and expect God. Number three, provide the best example. Even when you make a mistake, because people learn as much from how you handle mistakes is how you handle doing things well. So the example is all the way around. That's why we don't need to feel like we cannot reveal uh, you know, mistakes because we learn much from mistake, our own and other people's mistakes. So fathers and men, when you make, not if, when <laughs> you make a mistake, know that how you handle that is an example as well. Number four, love your wife and children with everything inside you and in your hand. You know, inside is the love, the, the, the compassion, and all that. But in hand means whatever you got, whatever you can do, whatever it takes, do it. Amen. Do it. Love is not just words. Love is what we actually do. Number five, instill confidence that anything is possible. That is so important for men and fathers to instill that in children. And we saw that in the video clip that uh, he said to his son. Uh, if you want it, go for it. Believe it's possible. Number six, only accept the best according to ability. Now, the term best is a relative term because, you know, the best of anything is only about, pertains to what your, your grace is, what your potential is, what, what's on the inside of you. So a good educator, good coach, good mentors, don't treat everyone the same. A good coach and mentor educator, you know, assesses each person, each child, and understands the differences, right? And knows how to encourage this one this way and the other one that way. And that's why um, it's so important that we as fathers and, and, and men, that we instill that confidence and, and only, ex only accept the best. So if something comes back that, you, that should be better, uh, you know, just uh, you can do better than this. And then show them how to do better than that. Sometimes people hide their abilities to avoid doing, you know, it's like, you know, those team projects in college. Oh, I hated those things, you know, because if you, if you do certain things, they lean on you to do that thing, you know, and just kind of cruise, you drag them behind you. Um, and sometimes those team projects, you go out for a job interview, and your team not with you. So what are you going to do? Especially in graphics and production stuff. That's, that's a real problem. And that team stuff is, actually hurts people because that video you showed me, you didn't do that, did you? It was five of y'all did that. <laughs> I didn't know what you can do. You know what I'm saying? So that team stuff, I mean, working together is important now. But what are your skill sets? And so the point is, you got to understand who you're working with. So expect the best according to ability. 
Number seven, expect, number seven, don't expect anyone to give you anything. Be prepared to earn it. So we thank God for helping people, helping us and being generous to us. Uh, we, and we receive it when it comes. But our mindset is, uh, I'll work for that. I'll earn that. Uh, you know, and sometimes giving people stuff prevents them from learning how to do it. So it's a mixture, isn't it? You know, we had a media camp, and we, we never, no, we, no, we rarely gave away even tuition. We said, you pay us $5, $10, you're going to pay something. Have your child over here, right? Not because we need the money, because, you know, life doesn't work the way you're thinking. You can't just get so much stuff for free and then be mad. <laughs> if you know, if it costs something, because life gonna cost you. So then, uh, but when it comes to even our own children and such, we give, but also we need to also re- understand that the, the 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 value of having a mindset, I'm prepared to earn it, is so key. Number eight, give more than you receive. Love is that way. Love is about giving, not about receiving. So give. Give, not with a motive of what can I get back. Number nine, like this one. Always bring your A game even when you're the only one who sees it. It is always do your best. It doesn't matter if it's a lot of people, few people, no people. Bring your best. Number 10, benefit your family before all others. I think you know that. Number 11, give space to flourish, fail, and recover. This happens a lot with children and with ed- people you know, who are growing up in any training and school. We're all going to flourish. We're all going to fail. The key is how you recover. And that comes to number 12, which is to model how to recover from failure and disappointment. Now, the thing about failure, you know, failure isn't final. And that word is, a, you know, the word failure is kind of a bad word in terms of thinking. Because if you haven't failed, you have found <laughs> another way not to do it. <laughs> Think about that. Sometimes failure shows you it just wasn't the way to do it. Or, or that uh, let me now adopt a new mindset or change the method. I mean, oftentimes, quote unquote, failure is just a recognition. I need to look at this another way because you are not a failure. I told y'all many times, this thing of failing school, they called my wife's school a failing school, and gave her a whole school away to another, a charter school. They said, the school failed. Did y'all see what she did up in there? And her children, and others, and others uh, in that school, but, but they, don't, they don't look at, they, look, they grade the whole school, and call the school, quote unquote, failing school. I actually detest that term. I understand the need to change things and make things better for all. I get that. But please celebrate the good. Because we also talk about failing families and failing men and failing. People love to throw the word fail on stuff and on people. And I say to you who are hearing this word today, don't accept that word. Understand that, yeah, you may fail at something only to the extent that you have found out what doesn't work or you're discovering another way to go about what God wants you to do. Amen, somebody? And again, as a father, model that. You know, my kids have seen me do things and fall short in things. I, I, you know, they've seen that and how we recover from it and keep on moving, keep on stepping. And encourage yourself, Lord, and receive encouragement, give encouragement, because these are all, life is full of these cycles. Number 13, surround your children with the values that you value. So key. You know, if you value uh, prayer, then, you know, show them prayer. If you value, uh, you know, accurate history and, and knowledge of life and, and being real about things in life, not just glossing over stuff. I mean, that's, show those values to your children. And finally, remember that love is unconditional. Say, Lord, thank you. Love is unconditional. Meaning doesn't matter what you do or don't do, love doesn't change. My love for you and appreciation does not change. 
Sometimes there's a performance sense that you got to perform for dad and mom. No, you're not, no, anybody, no, you're not performing. You're doing what you can do, do your best. No matter what happens, how it happens, the love doesn't change. And the willingness to help and support is always there. Amen, somebody? So get just some thoughts today I want to share with you, qualities of men and fathers, a few things to think about. Let's all stand. I'm going to stop there and then pray over us now. I want to leave you uh, with that thought, again, from Paul's writings, that we have grace, and by the grace of God, we can take what looks like weakness and see it as a doorway into strength. And when you feel overwhelmed by responsibilities and expectations, again, what God requires, he provides. Even what life requires, your family, your job, whatever requirements are on your life that are legitimate requirements, God will provide. Say, God will provide. And as Paul said in, in Corinthians, that what God told Paul he tells us, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Say, Lord, thank you. Your grace is sufficient for me. And then God said, God said, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So even when weakness shows up, it's a doorway for strength. Father, thank you. Thank you for this day, for Father's Day, for reminding us of these things. Thank you for helping us as men and fathers, to stay encouraged even when we face discouraging situations and, and things go on that disturb us, Lord. It's okay. As long as we then shift that burden onto you. And all of us, Lord, men, women, all of us in here, Lord, we, we live a lot of these same principles. So thank you, Father God, that you'll encourage us all. 